The minor signs have appeared on mass on a large scale. The widespread consumption of alcohol. Is alcohol not common even in the Muslim world? And then the, uh, the this widespread practice of abandoning one's parents. Muslims abandon their parents today. This is something which was not seen or heard of before. But this is happening increasingly. Putting their elderly in care homes without excuse when they can care for them. And then this is happening where a man will obey his friend but will disobey his father. A man will disobey his mother but will obey his wife instead. And then how children are becoming disobedient towards their parents. The spread of homosexuality whereby a man can marry a man. A woman can marry a woman. These laws are being passed in certain countries now. And this is how Rasulullah informed us of these signs. That namaz will be seen as a burden. The masjids are empty. Muslims do not pray namaz anymore. This is one of the signs of the judgment. That Muslims will see zakat as a burden. They will not give zakat anymore. That voices will be raised in the masjids. People will be shouting in the masajid. Muslims will be killed like they have never been killed before. Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Afghanistan, Burma, Bosnia, Kosovo, Chechnya, Kashmir, East Turkestan in China, in Central African Republic, <coughs> Sudan, Somalia, everywhere around the Muslim world you look, there has been killing and massacres like we have never seen before. And then Rasulullah he mentioned to us, Regarding adultery being widespread and common amongst the masses. Today you look at all of this fake pop star culture and sports star culture. These leading celebrities, so-called celebrities and people of sports and these personalities, they are engaged in adultery. They are not role models, but unfortunately we see even so-called imams and so-called Muslim du'at who are praising footballers and celebrities now. Subhanallah, did you know that Lionel Messi, he was not married to his partner. He had children with her without being married. What is a child when a child is born outside marriage? I do not need to see the, say the word. It's a B word. A child which is born outside marriage, it is not halal, it is haram, it is walad zina. A child of adultery. You know Cristiano Ronaldo, he is not married to the woman who he cohabits with. She's not his wife, she's his girlfriend. And they have children together. <laughs> These children are illegitimate. Right? And then you look at the other man, Kylian Mbappe. This individual was reportedly or is reportedly having a relationship with somebody who was a man. But then underwent gender reassignment surgery and now identifies himself as or itself as a woman. And these people are being lauded and praised as heroes, legends, right? icons. And who's looking up to them the most? Well, on a very wide scale, Muslims. Muslims across Muslim countries, in Arab countries, in Bangladesh, in India, Pakistan. That people are admiring these individuals. They have their posters, they follow their lives, they look at their every video. They follow their every snap, they comment on them, they talk about them, they want to be like them. But subhanAllah, where is the Ummah heading? Are these the only role models we are left with? SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas. That you are the best of people taken from mankind. You as Muslims. bil ma'rufi wa munkar. Why? Because you command the good and you forbid the evil. And what does Sayyidina Umar Farooq Al-Azam radiallahu anhu, the second Khalifa of Islam state? He said, Allah has honored Muslims with Islam. And if Muslims turn to something other than Islam, Allah will disgrace you. And that is what has happened today. That we have turned to other than Islam. Are our role models Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah says in Al-Quran Al-Kareem لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed in the Messenger of Allah is for you the best example. But we are not looking that way. We are not interested. But the best of mankind after the Prophets 
سيدنا ابو بكر صديق رضي الله عنه سيدنا عمر فاروق رضي الله عنه سيدنا عثمان غني رضي الله عنه سيدنا علي المرتضى اسد الله الغالب امام المشارق والمغارب رضي الله عنه مجمعين these are our guides these are our exemplars and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear in the deen عند الله الاسلام the only religion which is acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam من يبتغي غير الاسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه whoever follows a religion other than Islam it will never ever be accepted from him these are the words of Allah almighty now looking at this and placing it into context where does it leave us as a state of Muslims Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions he says man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum whosoever imitates a people he copies those people he follows those people then Allah will make him from them so if you copy the Jews and the Christians you will become from them you copy the idol worshippers you will be raised with them Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam mentioned in a famous narration anta ma'a man ahbabta and in another version al mar'u ma'a man ahabba you will be with the one who you love every person will be with the one he loves you love the football stars you will be with them you love the pop stars you will be with them you love the disbelievers you will be with them you love the enemies of Allah you will rise with them you love the friends of Allah and the beloved of Allah you will be with them so who do you want to be with you decide because in front of us there are only two parts and those parts are one of Iman and belief and one of Kufr and Dalala of disbelief and misguidance and a Muslim has to choose either or there is no middle way that I like a bit of this and I like a bit of that then it is munafakat, nifaq hypocrisy and this is why as Muslims we need to be certain of what we follow and of what we aspire to emulate in this life because the result in our akhirah is based on our dunya Nabi alayhi salatu was salam in a famous hadith what does he say it is mentioned in Sunni Ibn Majah and also with a slight variant wording in Sahih Muslim. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, Indeed, you will definitely follow those people who came before you. You shall definitely follow them. He said, arm span by arm span, forearm by forearm, hand span by hand span. Until if they were to go into a lizard's hole, then you will follow them into it. You will definitely follow them into that hole and enter that hole with them. And Sahaba Ikram alayhi asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you mean the Jews and the Christians? And he replied, who else? That in other words, the Muslims will follow the Jews and the Christians to the extent that they will follow them into the lizard's hole. And this is the extent to which Muslims are beginning to follow the kuffar. That now we have holidays and the day of Christmas is upon us. Christmas which has no link to the birth of Sayyidina Isa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. There is no authentically reported narration authentically mentioned that Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wa salam was born in the winter. Rather the report suggests that he was born in springtime. And this festival of Christmas, it has no link to the teachings of Sayyidina Isa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. Rather it is a festival of kufr. It is a festival in which the kuffar, they drink alcohol. They celebrate and commit adultery. They commit all kinds of evils. And it has become so commercialized now as well. It's not even religious in any sense. The majority of the people in the UK have become atheists and don't even believe in God. So it's just something which they do by way of rawaj, by way of tradition. But should Muslims be following them in this? Definitely not. Because we have been given the guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah. And our Sharia is sufficient for us in this regard. Muslims must not be celebrating Christmas because Rasulullah has guided us and told us to follow the teachings of Islam. 
that you are Muslims and your identity is Islam. And as a result of Muslims following the practices of the Kuffar, we have seen how the Iman of Muslims has weakened. A question is asked, can Muslims even say Merry Christmas to the Kuffar on the days of festivals? It's mentioned giving Mubarak and saying Merry Christmas with the intention of honoring the day of Christmas. It causes Kuffar. It causes a person to lose his Iman. How? Tabjeelul Kufri Kufr. This is mentioned in the classical books of fiqh. That respecting and honoring a matter of Kufr, it causes Kufr in itself. Imagine somebody is drinking alcohol. And you say, MashaAllah, well done, Mubarak to you. Somebody is committing idol worship. Somebody is committing Kufr. Somebody is committing shirk, disobedience to Allah. And you are congratulating on them. This is something which has to be avoided at all costs. And this is something which the scholars have mentioned in their books. Al-Bahrul Raik, one of the texts of Hanafi Fiqh, it mentions doing the same actions as disbelievers on those days which are specific to them is haram. Gathering for a turkey, gathering for a Christmas dinner and a meal, it should not be done on the day of Christmas because that day doesn't mean anything to me and you. That is imitation of the kuffar. If you want your family get together, you've got a two week long holiday period, do it a day before. Do it a day after. Why do it on a specific day? Then why get those specific foods which the kuffar make? We're going to have a stuffed turkey. Subhanallah. Where did this tradition come from? This is the real bid'ah, which is sayyi'ah. The bad innovation, the evil innovation. Right? And this is something which needs to be avoided. Do you ever see the kuffar? The Jews and the Christians celebrate Eid. Have they ever celebrated the maulid of Rasulullah wasalam? Have they ever taken part in Islamic festivities? No. Then why is it that Muslims are bending backwards to copy them? It's lack of self-esteem, lack of self-respect, lack of value in our own deen. And know very well, the person who thinks of any other path as being better than the path of Islam, he loses his Islam. Because the best path which has been given to you is the Quran and the Sunnah. And if you forsake that and follow other ways, then you are forsaken of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Likewise, Imam Ibn Nujayn, he mentions in Bahru Rai, buying and something, buying something especially on the day of Nowruz. He mentioned Nowruz which was a festival of the fire worshippers. But this can also apply to Diwali, it can apply to Hanukkah, it can apply to Easter, to Christmas, to any non-Muslim or pagan festival. He said buying something especially on that day, to honor that day, this is haram, this is not permissible. And also to gift the disbelievers something on that day. This is impermissible. In fact, in Ad-Dur al-Mukhtar, in the Hanafi work by Imam Haskafi, rahimahullah, in that work he mentions on the commentary by Ibn Abidin al-Shami, rahimahullah, that a person may have prayed salah and fasted and given zakah for his entire life. And then when he engages in an act of kufr, it wipes out all of the deeds of Iman of his previous life. Now this is how serious this masala is. Yet people are overlooking this and they see it as something minor. It is not something minor. Today you will be saying Merry Christmas. Tomorrow you will be having a Christmas tree in your house. The day after you will have the lights. The day after you will tell your children Santa is coming. Then the day after opening presents around Christmas trees and year by year. Like Rasulullah says, arm by arm, forearm by forearm, handspan by handspan. Wake up all Muslims. If these things are happening in your houses now, wake up, make tawbah. Return to the deen of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is something which has no basis in the deen of Islam. And our great scholars have even mentioned, Al-Hafiz Jalaluddin al-Suyuti, al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala. He mentions in his fatawa, from the evil innovations and evil acts are the resembling of the kuffar in accordance with their days of festivals, their cursed celebrations. And he said, like many of the ignorant Muslims do with the Christians in their Easter celebrations and in their celebrations in winter. By that he referred to Christmas. And he said, they claim that this is the birth of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam Suyuti, the great Hafiz, he says, everything they do in this, from the evil acts such as lighting fire, lighting fire, it could be Christmas lights today, preparing special foods, buying candles, and other than this are from the evil acts and innovations. They are bid'ah. And then he says, For indeed taking these days as seasons of celebration 
is from the religion of the Christians. And there is no basis of this in Islam. La asla lahu. There is no basis for it. And then there is no mention of this date from the previous pious predecessors of Islam, Ali or Ridwan. Rather, its origin is taken from the Christians. Here, Muslims, it's time to hold on and cling on to the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Our traditions are the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his Sahaba kiram alayhi wa ridwan. We ask Allah azza wa to guide us in these times of fitan, in these times of confusion and to keep us steadfast upon the Sunnah. May Allah ta'ala forgive me for any shortcomings and accept all of our presence here.